Since the COVID-19 pandemic induced lockdown, many of us have, have been spending many hours before the screen, be it for online classes or because of work from home. How does this increase screen time affect our eyes? Yes, many of us do not have the choice to reduce the screen time, given that students have to finish their coursework, go through their tuitions, and those working from home have to deliver their projects by uh, the given deadline. So really, they, perhaps it's not a choice to reduce the screen time drastically, but we can take some steps to reduce the strain on our eyes. To talk to us about this, we have with us today, Dr. Vidya Nair Chaudhary, Senior Consultant at Akash Healthcare Super Speciality Hospital in New Delhi. Welcome to the show, uh, Dr. Ra Chaudhary. Thank you so much, Anisha ji. It's a pleasure. So before we start uh, uh, speaking to uh, Dr. Vidya, and we'll be taking your questions, so do keep uh, putting them in the comment box. We'll take up all your questions, as many as we can. A quick introduction of uh, Dr. Vidya Nair Chaudhary as well. She was awarded the International Council of Ophthalmology Fellowship in Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus, which she completed at the prestigious Wilmer Eye Institute, John Hopkins University, USA. She has a way with kids and has a special interest in pediatric ophthalmology and squint. Uh, Oculoplasty and facial aesthetics, and of course, she has uh, studied at the prestigious uh, Ames Institute as well. Uh, so, Dr. Chaudhary, let's start uh, with uh, you know the most common questions that all moms have these days. Uh, you know, is about the strain on the eyes. Uh, is it a is it a real uh, worry? Does it actually cause uh, uh, you know poor eyesight? Will my child get? Uh, have to start wearing spectacles because he spends so much time in front of a laptop or a tablet because of the online classes or working from home. Yeah, so um, the digital classes or the digital life is now become a necessary evil that we all have to live with. And definitely it impacts the eyes of the child, especially more so the younger the child, the more the effect on the eyes. And there have been a lot of studies which have proven that uh, extended hours of on-screen time uh, can even induce minus powers or what we call myopia. Hmm. And if children are having a lot of strain, then they tend to rub their eyes. That can in turn cause cylinder powers as well. So uh, strain, digital eye strain is an issue where there are a lot of eye, eye strain problems like headaches, redness mm. of the eyes, watering of the eyes. And it can also cause uh, permanent spectacle powers. So both the issues need to be uh, looked into and we can discuss what tips we can, uh, you know, uh, employ in our day-to-day -day lives. Simple mm. things which can uh, go a long way to prevent these things. All right. So, you know... Um... When it comes to children, um, there are two sides of the spectrum. On one side, uh, you know, there are those who say there's no school. They have to study. You know, studies cannot be stopped. Uh, even if there's a pandemic, let's do online classes. The other side, online classes are bad for the eyes. Uh, it should be minimum or no classes for very young children. Now, you know, you can't have it in both extremes. There, there will be a middle ground. So how much of screen time is really bad? Is there a cutoff? Okay, this much of screen time is fine, won't affect your eyes. But more than this, your eyes will get affected, especially for younger kids, uh, say between the age group of 5 to 15. Yeah, so like you rightly said, we always have to find the middle ground for mm -hmm. anything in life for that matter. So uh, the middle ground would be, uh, so if you had to get a cutoff, so to say, the younger the child, the lesser should be the screen time. So mm. about two to three hours uh, maximum would be for a child less than about eight, nine years of age. Mm. The most important thing is to take breaks while they are on the screens. So if mm. they are doing even five to six hours of screen time, it's okay if they are able to take breaks in between. Uh, mm. We'll talk about a few things that they have to do in these breaks, which they do, and then uh, that can... Uh, you know, reduce the strain and reduce the negative effects of the screen time. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I do. So have both a... ways. You're saying that the breaks will help you with your strain yeah. plus the long term negative effects. Yes, both. Both. Okay. So um, I do have a little presentation that I think uh, we can probably go through. So, because most of the 
um, the apprehensions, the anxieties that the parents have or the children themselves have, I think would be answered uh, to a large extent uh, if they just uh, listen to what I have to say. And then they can, there will obviously be a volley of questions which we can take in, uh, after sure. that. Uh, Dr. Chaudhary, please take us through your presentation. So I'll just share my screen. Can you see my screen shared, uh, Anisha ji? Uh, yes, I can see. Please go ahead. So, um, like we said, we are here to talk about digital eye strain or DES. It's a new age eye disease that we are all talking about. So mm. it's got different names. Some people call it digital vision syndrome. Some people call it computer vision syndrome. So it's all the same, right? Mm. So we all know, uh, we've heard enough about the Corona virus, which is a tiny virus, but which has mm. shaken the whole globe. I think the whole world is now reeling under the impact of this virus. We've all become masked individuals. So initially children used to see only superheroes in their fiction, comics and television uh, used to be masked, but now everybody is masked. Mm. And we are all uh, into a deep digital life, right? We've taken a mm. deep plunge into digital life which has definitely made things easy. So students are now able to attend classes, uh, children across even Akash uh, have access to course material. They're able to contact their teachers, clear their doubts. They're able to be in touch with their other uh, course students. Uh, parents are able to work from home, have meetings. People are able to continue with their shopping, learn hobbies and whatnot. So mm -hmm. if we did not have internet, we would have uh, life come to a standstill. So maybe like the Spanish flu that happened about a century ago, compared to the COVID epidemic that we have now, there's a world of difference because of the digital life. So, but the digital life uh, and the lockdown has its own implications. Since everything has switched to online platforms, this has caused what we call digital eye strain or digital vision syndrome. Now, digital eye strain is uh, largely because of two things. One is excessive use of screens for a long period of time causes us to focus on the screens. And this causes uh, the focusing muscles of the eye to get jammed or to get tight, to go into contracture or spasm. And this causes what we call vision stress or accommodative stress. So there's one uh, set of symptoms or one set of problems because of this. And the second set of problems is because of dry eye. I think dry eye is something that anybody who uses a computer or a laptop for a long period of time nowadays experiences. It's mm. become such a common thing uh, to, for a doctor to see and for a patient to feel as well. So if we were to understand the focusing mechanism of the eyes, uh, so the eye is the best camera in the world, right? Mm. What our eye captures, no camera can capture. So God has designed our eyes uh, in such a way that it has lenses, much like the DSLR lenses that we have, where you have those zoom in lenses, you have to move them mm. to adjust okay. the focal length when you mm. have to, uh, you know, see for distance or near. Mm. So when the eyes are focused for distance, the muscles of the eye are relaxed. And when we are focusing for near, the muscles are actually tight or they are in contracture. Hmm. So we were meant or we as human beings were made in this world to look at nature. So we were made to look at the beautiful mountains, the clear blue sky, you know, and keep ourselves relaxed. But what did we do? We shut ourselves indoors and look at the clear blue sky on the laptop. So <laughs> we are, our muscles are now going into contracture. And if we are doing this for long periods of time, the muscles are literally going into uh, what we call like a lock jam. So mm -hmm. if you're not relaxing them in between, they kind of get set there. They just jam there. And once the muscles are jammed, that is going to cause a lot of problems, uh, which are called um, like headaches, uh, eye strain, eye fatigue, blurring of vision and things like that. And... The single most important thing probably in the causative uh, mechanism of dry eye would be the absence of a good blink rate. So why yeah. is blinking so important? So when we blink, 
we are actually replenishing the tear film on the surface of our eyes. So our, our eyes have to be perpetually moist. So there is a tear film on the surface that keeps it moist. And when we blink, uh, the tear film is replenished. And there are a lot of glands in our eyelids, which actually squeeze out an oily secretion. So this oil forms like a layer on this water. And oil on water prevents water from evaporating. So if you do not blink, the tear film is not replenished. There is no oily surface on the water film. And then this uh, water film just evaporates. And that causes a lot of uh, pain in the eyes, redness, soreness of the eyes. It's like having chapped lips, you know, or dry skin. So when you have dry skin, it's going to hurt there. It's going to burn there. So it's like that. When you have dry eyes, there's going to be a lot of burning. There's going to be a lot of irritation, sensitivity to bright light and other things happening. Uh, the third thing we do see is what we call convergence insufficiency. So convergence insufficiency happens when on prolonged uh, near viewing, on prolonged screen use, there is uh, the muscles of the eye start getting tired and uh, letters start doubling or they start ghosting. So this is what we call convergence insufficiency. Uh, it is most often diagnosed by an ophthalmologist and then the ophthalmologist will tell you what exactly needs to be done for it. It mostly involves a lot of eye exercises. So we'll go through this in a little detail later. So I've already told you, so the symptoms of DES or digital eye strain is one because of the excessive focusing of the eyes, which causes the muscles to go into spasm and that causes eye strain, headaches, blurring of vision. So we have a lot of uh, software professionals or even students these days who say after the online classes, when we're looking around, everything seems blurry. That's mm. because the muscles have now gone into contracture for the near, that when you look for distance, they're not able to relax. And then the distance uh, vision has now become blurry and there is difficulty in focusing and refocusing. The muscles are not able to adjust anymore. And then there is the symptoms of dry eye, which is irritated and burning eyes, tired eyes, sensitivity to bright lights, and a lot of discomfort in the eyes. The third thing which we should not ignore is the postural effects. So we do know that uh, children especially, you know, after a few hours of sitting, then they tend to lie down, slouch, and especially if they're on the mobile phones, this happens more. So this can lead to pain in the neck and shoulders, which is uh, not very easy to treat. So a lot of people, in fact, need to go into physiotherapy and things for this. If we were to see what the magnitude of the problem of DES actually is, so uh, studies in 2016, which is the non-COVID era, has shown us that there is an overall prevalence of about 65%. And if you're using two or more devices, which almost all of us do, we mm. use uh, you know, a laptop or a desktop or television, and mm -hmm. we all use our mobile phones. So the prevalence is about 75%. So this is non-COVID prevalence. So I would say right now, it must be touching somewhere between 90, 95%, if not 100. So anybody who's on two or more devices is definitely, definitely at a risk of DES. And dry eye is much, much more in computer users as compared to a normal population. Interestingly, there have been studies in children. Children as young as 10 to 12 years are now coming with dry eye. So we all, uh, you know, when we were studying, we, we were taught that dry eye is a disease of the middle age and the older age group when your tear glands kind of die out with age and mm. the tear production reduces but that's not the case anymore. I think we are seeing more dry eye in youngsters now because of the screen use. And uh, in little children, if you, uh, you know, abstain them from screens for about a four week period, it has mm. been shown that dramatically improvements in uh, these symptoms occur. So uh, it's not that children cannot have dry eyes. So that is something that we need to uh, know and we need to treat. So we've discussed the problem. Hmm. Problems are always there, but now what is the solution? How can we get our eyes to stay healthy? This is what we all need to concentrate on. So the single most important uh, 
slide from the presentation, if I would want anybody to remember, is this one. So this is the 2020 rule. So we are in the era of IPL 2020 cricket. So everybody is talking 2020. So what is the 2020 rule? So the 2020 rule states that after 20 minutes of any screen time, you need to take a 20 second break and look 20 feet away. So the 20 feet away is very important because if you take a 20 second break from your laptop and look into your mobile screen, then that's not a break. Right. So we see uh, children. I see my, my own daughter during online classes. She does that. You know, she's taking a break from the online classes, but she's on the laptop chatting with her friends. So yes. That, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that doesn't help. That's not a break. Yes. So the HRD ministry has given guidelines that they shouldn't have classes for more than so many hours, not so many minutes at a stretch. So they are giving breaks in between. But is the child actually taking the break? That is what we need to see. So the children need to take breaks, uh, anybody for that matter, even if it's an adult who's on the computer, needs to take a break every 20 minutes, look away from the screen for at least 20 seconds and look as far as possible. So if you have a window or a door in the room you're studying in, look out. If you have a balcony, just get out, look out for a few seconds. Um, it's good to you know get up, walk around, uh, just go to the kitchen, see what your mom is cooking, do something. So that way your posture is also uh, getting some amount of correction. You're getting a break. So it's important. And this 20-minute uh, thing is important. So why is 20 minutes important? So uh, let's take an analogy. If you were uh, going to lift, say, a 10 kg weight and you're going to be standing there. So now your hands are getting sore you know that you need to put this down for you to mm. get some rest so that the soreness doesn't become a permanent soreness. Mm. So if you were to hold this for three hours and then put it down and then expect that the soreness will vanish, that is not going to happen. So it is important to put it down and it is important to put it down at the right time so that the soreness doesn't become a permanent feature. So that is why it is important to take breaks after 20 minutes. So maximum, I would say after half an hour, uh, if you take breaks after two hours of work and then expect that everything is going to be good, that is not going to happen. So you have to take breaks with short uh, breaks, just 20 seconds, not a big deal. And take breaks uh, within 20 to 30 minutes and look as far away from the screen as possible. So that uh, would take care of the accommodative stress or the muscle spasm that we had talked about earlier. The second thing we talked about is the dryness. Now, how do we take care of dryness of the eyes? The only thing that we can uh, do is blink, right? So we normally, as we're talking to each other, we keep blinking about 16 to 20 times a minute. And because we do this unconsciously, we don't realize it. Now, when we're on screens, we go into staring mode, right? Like the screens go into night mode and the humans go into staring mode. So when you're staring, then the eyes become really, really dry. So you have to learn to consciously blink. And how do you do that? You have to remind yourself. So put a small sticky note on your laptop, on your computer, or take a printout, put it near your screen. You have to do something to remind yourself till it becomes a habit. So once you start doing it regularly, then it becomes a habit. And obviously, uh, if there is already a dry eye problem, then you have to use some tear supplements. So we do get a lot of over-the-counter tear supplements with the chemist which you can use. We would um, suggest you use preservative-free tear supplements because some of them have harsh preservatives which can themselves be a lot, uh, cause a lot of uh, damage to the eyes. And a few little other things which can ease the strain on your eyes. Mm -hmm. One is uh, never use screens in the dark. So make sure your room is well lit. It could be artificial lighting. It could be natural lighting. That doesn't matter. It has to be good ambient lighting. And keep your screens at arm's length. So at least, uh, even if it's in a mobile phone, put it on a desk so that it corrects your posture as well. Keep it away at an arm's length. 
uh, the laptops and screens, everything at least in arm's length. So the best option would be to use a television and you know telecast mm-hmm. it onto a television or this is the era of smart TVs where everything is available on the television. Mm-hmm. And the screens should always be below the eye level so that um, your eyes are you know, not wide open so that dryness doesn't happen as often as it would otherwise. Mm-hmm. And you can reduce screen brightness and increase screen contrast. We'll just talk about this a little more later. So uh, I think we talked about workstation lighting. You should have adequate lighting. The other important thing you have to see is that the light is not falling directly on the screen. Because if that happens, then there's a lot of glare and there's a washout of the screen, which causes a lot of strain. So make Mm. sure that there is no glare coming in from the screen as such. On the screen? Yes. Glare uh, reflecting off the screen rather. Okay. Okay. Right. And then um, the device display settings is something that we can all toggle with. So uh, a simple way of doing this is you take just a white paper, plain paper, put it against your screen, a white background of your screen, and they should look the same. So if your screen is looking much brighter, then you have to reduce the brightness. If it's looking very dull, then increase the brightness a little. So that is like an optimum brightness for uh, the soothing effect on the eyes. This is something that I tell every child, cut down non-essential screen time. You know, when we talk about screen time, so if I were to ask a child, how many hours of screen time do you do? So the child uh, invariably tells me that um, I do classes for four hours, so four hours of screen time. Right? So mm. the hours spent on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on YouTube, on Netflix, all that is conveniently forgotten. And that's not only with children, even with adults. You know, scientific studies were actually see done to mm. see how conscious we are about our screen time. So we forget those little things. Like while we, while we were eating, we were watching a YouTube video. We were in the same room with the family members thinking we are uh, spending quality family time, but we are actually all on our own digital devices. right? So this all adds to screen time. So we have to cut down on non-essential screen time. For that, first, we have to be aware of it. And then we have to cut down on it. So spend some time gardening, reading books, playing board games. I grew up on a lot of board games. right? I'm sure uh, my generation, so to say, did a lot of board games. So we should all go back, maybe a generation, back to board games, back to the basics. Um, And avoid gaming. That's another thing that children do a lot. And especially on mobiles. And when they're gaming, uh, they tend to go very, very close to the mobile. So definitely avoid mobile gaming. And uh, yeah, cut down on non-essential screen time, basically. So even students who are on classes, uh, when you take breaks, take a non-screen break. So a break is good to relax your mind, uh, get stress-free, but do something which does not involve screens. The, um, so I need to talk about blue light because suddenly mm. it has become so important in our lives. Right? Everybody is talking about blue cut glasses or blue blocking yeah. lenses. And if you go to an optical shop, the optician is recommending them. Online platforms are recommending them. Uh, there is no day when I go to Facebook and I do not see an advertisement about blue cut lenses. So... Are they really important? Do we need to use them? And if so, uh, how uh, important are they? So basically, we need to understand that blue light is part of white light and white light is everywhere. So blue light has two parts. One part, which is useful to us because it uh, controls our sleep-wake cycle. So it's important for us to get sleepy at the right times, get hungry at the right time, those kind of things. And there's one part of the blue light, which is harmful to the eyes. Now, what harm can it cause? So like I said, blue light is everywhere. It's there in sunlight, in your cell phones, in your computers, Mm -hmm. in the TVs, everywhere. So uh, many, many years of exposure to blue light can cause what we call age-related macular degeneration. So it uh, causes some photochemical damage to the retina, which is the nervous layer of the eye. And the central part of the retina is the macula through which we see. So uh, blue light is implicated in the development of age-related macular degeneration. 
So uh, the protection for this is what we call blue blocking glasses. So they cut out these harmful blue uh, rays and can prevent this age-related macular degeneration uh, as you age uh, uh, in a long term. But they do not reduce the digital eye strain. So the claims that you wear blue blocking glasses and the children will not have any digital eye strain is not proven, is mm -hmm. not uh, scientifically proven. There is no scientific rational to it. So if you wear glasses and don't take your breaks, don't blink enough, you will still have a lot of strain. So it's very important to follow these practices rather than just put on glasses and think that everything has been taken care of. Right? Hmm. And obviously, if you have glasses, you must wear them when you're on the computers and avoid contact lenses because that can precipitate dry eye disease. And if you have dryness, then please do use some eye drops for this. So before we started the presentation, we were talking about this, that glasses, glass powers are actually induced by screen time. So uh, minus power glasses can be induced and children who already have minus power glasses, they can see uh, a rapid progression in their minus powers if they are on screens for a long period of time. And especially mm. on screens up close. So the mobile phones, are the worst of the lot, mm -hmm. right? And so definitely no near screens for toddlers because that's the age when the eye is growing the maximum and excessive eye rubbing can induce cylinder powers as well. So there have been lots of studies on this and mm -hmm. uh, I'm just quoting one of them, which shows that, you know, if you increase screen time from less than one hour per day to more than three hours per day, there's an exponential increase in the prevalence of myopia. Myopia or nearsightedness is when you have a minus power of glasses, hmm. right? And the increase is about fold in the younger age group. So six to seven years, the increase is much more than the older uh, age group. So hmm. the younger the child, the more detrimental the effect of the screen time is going to be. So we have studies in the in North India also called the North India Myopia study, which has proven the same thing. Uh, so especially mobile phones is something that I want to stress here because um, if you need to give the child a screen, give them something else, not a mobile phone. And the only thing that has been shown to uh, you know prevent this or have some positive effect on this is outdoor activities. So if a child is mm, spending a lot of time on screens, balance it out with outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. So we need to go out now that the lockdown has eased, can go out, obviously with our own uh, social distancing norms, wear a mask and things like that. But it not only gives us protection from myopia, it relaxes our eyes because now we're going to be using our eyes to actually look at the clear blue sky. And we can uh, uh, generate vitamin D, which is again very important uh, for you know, treatment of dryness of the eyes. A little thing I want to just add here. So when we go out, we all need to wear our masks and we need to wear our masks the right way. So we've, we all have a lot of uh, mask fashion going on these days, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, like you can see the rightmost image is the right way to wear a mask where you cover both your nose, your mouth, and it has to go all the way down your chin and it has to be well fitted on the sides. And once you wear your mask, please do not touch the front of your mask. If you need to take it out after your bag, you need to use the bands to take them out. Small note on convergence insufficiency. So we spoke about that uh, weakness of the muscles. Mm. So uh, we generally prescribe what we call pencil push-ups, where you take a pen or a pencil, put it in front of your eye, look at the tip, and then just move it towards your eyes and keep looking at the tip of the pen or pencil. And then you continue this about 10, 15 times in the morning and evening. So these are basically like push-ups for your eyes. Or then you, or sometimes a doctor will give you uh, what you see on the left. These are called cat cards. So we can all do this exercise. You know, there are these two half cats. If you put your finger near your screen between the two cats and just concentrate on the tip of your finger, you'll be able to fuse both the cats into one. Hmm. So, and you get a 3D effect, right? So this kind of is for strengthening the muscles of your eye. So, uh, this is another, these are all stereo cards that we give for uh, this is the same thing. You put your uh, finger between these two buckets. They're actually buckets in 3D. 
and you put them in the middle, uh, put your finger in the middle, concentrate on the tip of your finger, and you'll see that you are able to fuse them into one and you actually see a 3D image. You know, it's kind of popping out of the screen. So these stereo card exercises and pencil push-ups, these are important to take care of convergence insufficiency. But it's, it's difficult to diagnose convergence insufficiency or your, on your own. And it's probably your doctor who's going to tell you what you have and what you need to do for it. Uh, a lot of things you can do to relax your eyes. One of them is palming, where you just rub your hands uh, and then generate some heat and close your eyes and put your uh, palm on your eyes and let the heat seep through your eyelids. So this relaxes the eyes. And then you can do some eye rotations. I think we can all maybe just do it along with the video. So it's important not to move your neck, just your eyes. You look to the right, look to the left and hold for about two to three seconds and then repeat. And you look up. So look to the right and left a couple of times, up and down. So simple things that we can all do sitting at home whenever we take a break or whatever time we have. And these can relax your eyes uh, to a large extent. We did talk about the postural effects. So, uh, you know, we should avoid turtling, falling over our laptops mm. and computers. We see a lot of children doing this, mm. especially over the mobile phones. So this can cause a lot of neck strains and back strains, and this needs to be avoided. The correct sitting posture... I would say every child has to be on a desk and a chair and have the screen about 15 degrees below the eye level and good arm support, back support and feet flat on the floor. This mm -hmm. is one question I think no parent misses asking me. What should I give the child to eat, right? So uh, as far as the eyes are concerned, uh, what is good for your eyes is a lot of vitamin A, C and E. So vitamin A is available in all the uh, orange colored fruits and vegetables. So that would be mm. carrots, pumpkins, papayas and things like that. And uh, then vitamin C, you know, in citrus fruits, in uh, gooseberries, in uh, uh, vitamin E, in oils, in fat, in vegetable oils and uh, green leafy vegetables. And uh, omega-3 fatty acids especially are important for people who have dryness of the eyes. So they're good. Mm. A good amount of this is seen in walnuts and flax seeds and in fish for fish. fish. <clears throat> so this needs to be there as part of your daily diet. And uh, I think we all need to cool down. So uh, <laughs> we need to uh, let our eyes cool down as well. So you can use a, a ice pack. You can use an ice pack. You can use a few ice cubes wrapped in cloth some cool cucumbers or you can just stick a metallic spoon into the freezer for a couple of minutes and then use the back of the spoon. So especially for um, children who have redness in the eyes. So this could yeah. be an indication that there are some allergies in the eyes. So uh, using this really helps and uh, it reduces the strain. It reduces the tendency to itch and it gives a lot of comfort. So to just recapitulate, we know what we have to do. 20-20-20 rule. We need to blink consciously. 
we need to take care of our posture, room lighting, and the illumination of the screens. Use your glasses if you have been advised any glasses. Use lubricating eye drops if you have some dryness. You can do the pencil push-ups ex exercises. Spend some time outdoors uh, and hydrate yourself. Do some compresses. If there are any symptoms, then we need to consult an ophthalmologist. So if in spite of taking all these precautions, if some problem is uh, persisting, that means you need to see a doctor, need to see if there is something else going on. Very often children have the need for glasses. They don't mm -hmm. know about it. And they have a lot of these symptoms. So they just keep doing these things and they're like, no, my digital ice cream is not going away. Okay. So uh, they, they wouldn't know that they need glasses unless they see a doctor. So if okay. these symptoms are persisting, please do consult a doctor and get the right treatment. And no talk in COVID era is complete without talking about hand hygiene. I'm sure everybody's bored of hearing about hand hygiene. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as a doctor, I have to stress on it again because a single most important thing that can probably prevent the infection from getting into our body. And, uh, you know, COVID can get into our body through our eyes as well, because the mm. eyes, surface of the eyes have a lot of these receptors which binds to the virus. So mm. please do wash your hands well. Uh, and the normal hand washing, you can see the picture on the left, actually leaves a lot of these, these yellow and red areas are the areas which are left un unwashed or unscrubbed when we do a normal hand wash. So we need to do what we doctors always do, a surgical hand wash, where you wash the front, you wash the backs, you wash in between the fingers. We always forget our thumbs. So scrub your thumbs, scrub your palms. So do a good hand wash so that your hands are thoroughly clean, cleansed before you touch your face or your eyes. And uh, the eye flu that we normally see, could be a symptom of COVID-19. So if there's some persistent redness of the eyes, swelling of the eyes, some discharge from the eyes, do see a doctor and make sure that there's nothing else untoward going on. Mm -hmm. So all the best to all the students. Um, so I'm, I know I'm talking to a lot of young professionals in the making and you've all been studying hard. So you just need to be positive. Uh, I'm sure you'll all do well. Uh, in both your exams and in your careers, your lives are ahead. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Thank you for that presentation, uh, Dr. Chaudhary. We've uh, started getting a lot of questions from viewers who have seen your presentation, who've been uh, hearing you for the last few minutes. So let's start taking some of these questions. Now, you did mention that uh, you, know, you shouldn't turtle over your digital device, yes. especially your laptops. Now, we have a question from Ayush who's asking, how to maintain body posture while using a tablet? Because a tablet is usually handheld and it could be close to you, far from you. Sometimes it's on the bed and you're hunching over. So how to maintain good body posture when using a tablet? So um, mobiles and tablets, this problem we see more often. Hmm. Very simple solution is get a stand. Right. Okay. So tablets also come with these covers which double up as stands as well. Mobiles come with covers that double up as stands or you get the stands separately. Mm -hmm. So put them on stands, put them on a desk, put them at an arm's distance and sit on a chair. So that way, both the posture and the distance that you need to maintain from the screen, they're both taken care of. Right. So okay. it's, it's very important to do that. Otherwise... Mm -hmm. uh, you can land up with a lot of problems. So simple solution, invest in a stand. All right. And place the stand on top of your desk. Yes. Place it on a hard surface on top of your desk and sit on a chair like you would do with a desktop or a laptop. Okay. So you would not recommend, you know, lying down and holding the tablet or, you know, uh, lying on your stomach and facing the tablet, which many children Definitely do. no. Definitely no. Because... Um, the postural problems that we see are not just, I mean, obviously those things cause a lot of strain to the eyes as well. Like I said, if you don't maintain a proper angle, then you are staring more, your eyes are open, there is more, uh, uh, you know, there is more uh, incidence of dryness of the eyes and things like that. But the postural problems can cause a lot of issues, especially okay. later on, neck pains and back pains. Yeah. So yeah. you have to take care of them. 
you have to right. sit up sit up sit erect right because, like just imagine you're in your classroom you would not be lying down right yes you be yes. seated yes right we have another question and uh, this person is saying i am already wearing specs and i think my power has increased can you suggest any remedy to reduce power can, can that happen so um i know uh, that there are a lot of uh, claims that say that you do some treatments some exercises reduce your powers and things like that but scientifically there has not been any proof for that and mm. we don't see that either um though sometimes uh, when children are on screens for a long period of time they develop what we call pseudo myopia pseudo myopia or false myopia that means when you are on uh, near screens for a long time the muscles go into spasm and a minus number is induced in the eyes which would disappear if the muscles relax right so if that is the case if the number is increasing because of the strain on the muscles of the eyes that will reverse if you relax the eyes okay. so if you just take a lot of breaks view distance in between um or sometimes we give drops to relax the muscles of the eyes then the pseudo myopia is taken care of but uh, we rarely do give drops it's mostly the lifestyle changes that you have to uh, take uh, all right to account there is no real treatment to reverse minus powers mm. <laughs> unless it's a surgery which we do after the age of 18 or so right a lasik surgery or mm. a smile surgery there are a lot of options which we uh, give the uh, adults the young adults but not in children all right uh, dr chaudhry uh, more questions coming in about uh, uh, the blue light glasses that you had also mentioned in a presentation so rama is asked is saying blue ray filter specs can be used and Lakshmi Priya is saying, uh, "Hello, ma'am. I you uh, I too use computer glasses. Is there anything to care about? Like you mentioned in your presentation, the blue eye glasses uh, give you benefit over the really long term. Uh, they don't, um, you know, uh, help you avoid the eye strain. So, uh, can you just be, you know, complacent and wearing those blue blue eye uh, blue light glasses? So now I don't need to do anything. My eyes are safe." yeah so th- that's what exactly what i wanted to stress on you know so mm. people so anything uh, you know that is tangible in monetary uh, at a monetary, monetary level yeah, yeah you in, feel that i spent for the glasses something. i've done it all yeah so in monetary you've spent say 3000 4000 on these blue cut glasses so mm. now you're not going to get digital eye strain and you forget everything else so that is not the case and that is not what i want the kids to do so mm. if you have glass powers and if you uh, need to wear glasses anyway there is no mm. harm in getting blue cut glasses okay. because they do give you some benefit so there is mm. no harm in wearing blue cut glasses i'm not against them definitely but it is not a replacement to the 20 20 20 rule or the blinking or the taking breaks so these are things mm. that we cannot really assess in terms of monetary terms you know so mm. these are simple things that you can do but they are definitely much more valuable uh, to prevent digital eye strain than the blue cut glasses all right uh, uh dr chaudhry another question coming in from rama m she is asking should we use hot pack or cold pack for eyes for dry eye syndrome so uh, hot packs are generally used when you have some inflammation infection in your eyes so okay. if uh, you you have what we normally call a sty you have some nodules over the eyes or you mm. have a, a red eye you have a viral infection of the eyes which causes mm. a lot of swelling over the eyes something like that then sometimes we give hot packs so hot packs are not used on a general basis if you mm. have dryness of the eyes if you have allergies of the eyes then you uh, use cold packs but mm. there is a condition where which we call meibomian gland dysfunction so meibomian gland dysfunction is there are a lot of glands in the eyelids which tend to get blocked we were talking about these glands they mm. secrete a kind of oil oil so if uh, the doctor has seen that these glands are all blocked in your eyelid they sometimes uh, sometimes not sometimes but generally we advise hot compresses and lid massage 
to actually mm. express out the secretions of these glands. So when you do a hot compress, the secretions of this gland kind of liquefy. And then when mm. you do a massage of the lids, then they get expressed out. Because blockage of these glands can cause repeated sty, cause a lot of dryness. So unless you've been diagnosed with a mebomin gland dysfunction, then mm. I would suggest as a routine basis, do a cold compress. If you have a mebomin gland dysfunction and the doctor has advised you a hot compress, then by all means, please continue the hot compress. All right. Uh, so cold compresses for um, you know the digital strain. And yes. if there is an infection, um, uh, uh, a hot pack for that. So now we have a question coming in from Kumar Piyar. Uh, he's asking, ma'am, how can we test if our glasses are blue light protective? I guess you have to you know, order those special lenses, right? Yeah, so there are, um, there are ways of testing. There is, you put the blue light and put a filter behind it and see if the blue light is passing. You mm -hmm. know, they generally have those uh, filters and those lights in the optical shop and they show you, see, see now this is the blue light, this is going through, this is not going through, okay. those kinds of things, yeah. So Siva is asking, ma'am, when we use a PC having anti-glare screen, will it prevent DES? So it can help, but mm. it cannot totally prevent. So DES, like we spoke, is not because of a single uh, factor. It is because of a lot of things. And glare mm. is one of those things. So having an anti-glare screen helps definitely, but it is not going to uh, do away with your chance of getting DES. Unless you take breaks, if you're going to be staring at an anti-glare screen for two, three hours at a stretch, you're going to get DES. If you're not okay. going to blink, you're going to get DES. So you have to uh, follow all the precautions. But yes, anti-glare screens do help. All right. So Akshin is asking, ma'am, which screen is better, computer or mobile for attending classes? And at what distance should I see? So definitely a computer is better uh, than a mobile. Because, yes, than mobiles because uh, with mobiles the the uh, the distance between the eyes and the screens does tend to come down because the font size and other things you know sometimes you have to really look close. Mm. Uh, if you're using the mobile like we spoke earlier, also it should be minimum at an arm's length, right? Okay. So, uh, an arm would be not a small child's arm, but I'm presuming that you are at least a 16, 17 year old. So hmm. your arm's length and uh, keep it at that distance uh, minimum. If you can be further away, that's better, but at least at an arm's length. Because I'm sure you have to operate the screen also in between. So being hmm. more than arm's length is not practical, but at least at an arm's length, you have to keep the screen. Okay. And perhaps you can increase the font size so that you can view it from that distance. Yeah, you can do that. And uh, very often, you know, it's it's a lecture or a class where you don't really have to see. You mm. just have to hear. So yeah. at that time, you can just switch off the screen or look away from the screen and just keep listening. Mm. Right. So that can uh, decrease the screen time. Right. So uh, Avni has sent us, uh, Avni Bhatt has uh, asked the question, Hello, ma'am. I get pain between the eyebrows and it leads to headache after online classes and sometimes even during classes. How can I reduce this pain? Do you think this is because like she's focusing, um, you know, hard on uh, the screen and her muscle is getting this jammed? This is a classic like symptom of DES. Pain okay. uh, between the eyebrows, you know, the area here, the pain mm. in the eyes, uh, difficulty in focusing. So classic DES. So definitely, Avni, take your breaks, look away from the computer every 20 minutes, keep blinking more often. And if you have persistent blurriness or persistent pain, then you should mm. see an eye doctor. Make sure you don't have a spectacle power that you're not yeah. using. So that is very important. Right. Uh, Ma'am, uh, we have a question coming in from Divya. Divya is saying, Ma'am, does night mode or dark mode help the eyes? So night mode, more than night mode, I would say, uh, you know, you decrease the brightness in any way. It definitely helps the eyes. So night mode is basically that. It's less brightness. Hmm. So it definitely helps the eyes. So if you can use night mode, it is good. But hmm. having said that, 
not in a dark room so you okay. have to make sure that the ambient lighting is good hmm. so as long as ambient lighting is good even if your screen is a little brighter than the night mode it's fine so your screen should never be brighter than your a uh, room surrounding areas yeah okay. surrounding area we all a uh, lot of us have this habit of um switching off all the lights deciding we are going to bed and then once you're in bed you take your mobile and start doing something on the mobile for 10 15 minutes yes. so that definitely causes a lot of strain so once you decide to go to bed you've switched off the lights then no gadgets so ma'am can you explain why the strain comes in if we are in a dark room and we're looking at uh, the mobile why do we why are eyes uh, more strained so when we look into bright light bright screens then hmm. uh, there's a lot of strain in our eyes because our muscles need a lot of more power to focus a lot more power to you know uh, to get that sharpness the contrast the clarity hmm. uh, this is like just to put into simple terms so okay. if you have a lot of ambient lighting then that kind of cuts out that strain a lot okay So uh, G K Dalmia is asking, why are my eyes getting squinted after online classes? Is this something that you have also noticed, uh, Doctor Chaudhary? So squinting, uh, one we spoke about convergence insufficiency, right? So mm-hmm. if you have a large amount of convergence insufficiency, then you can develop what we call intermittent squints. So you can mm-hmm. have your eyes just moving out uh, intermittently. and you have to actually use the power of your muscles to focus them again so this is called intermittent divergent squint or intermittent dextrotropia so if you are having intermittent squints you should definitely see a doctor make sure why the squinting is happening do you have an uh, eye glass problem do you have a convergence insufficiency problem is it something mm. else you may probably be mm, given some eye exercises that you have to do or if the squint problem is worse it is not just intermittent it is more prolonged than you think it is then you may need some other measures to take care of it so a squint should never be you know left uh, just like that you have to definitely mm-hmm. consult a doctor a squint specialist mm. and make sure you get treated for it all right um we have another question coming in from shazia sunil She's asking, "Ma'am, I always get headache after three, four hours of online classes. Is there a way to avoid it?" Plus, uh, there is uh, another question from Hisham, which seems to be related. He's saying, uh, "Ma'am, is there any specific time for which eye strain is less? I mean, I, is it the duration or is it the time of the day? Uh, you know, Shashi is having a problem being online just three to four hours a day. What would you say? Is there an ideal time in the day when your eye strain is less?" is there an ideal time or a threshold that if you don't cross uh, you will not get eye strain so there's no real ideal time of the day you can do mm. your classes in the morning evening it doesn't matter but yes if you're already tired and then you're mm. online so definitely mm. your eye strain is going to be much more so if you kind of relaxed um, de-stressed yourself taken a break and mm. then you're on, on online classes the less the chance that you will get eye strains so you have to be fresh when you're on the class in the classes when you're online so that is one point but otherwise it doesn't really matter as long as even in the evenings or night if you're studying on the screen it's fine as long as the ambient lighting is good hmm. that doesn't really matter as far as uh, headaches after 3 to 4 hours of classes is concerned is uh, it's again the same thing you know the muscles are probably going to hmm. spasm and getting uh tight and you are getting headaches so you have to just keep taking breaks sarzia uh, mm, so blinking mm, so you're saying it, it you, the length of the duration of screen time uh you know excessively is going to hit you but uh, even if it's a lot of screen time so long as you keep taking um, breaks at regular intervals look away uh, take a short walk uh in that break time the strain on the eyes will reduce and will this also reduce uh, the uh, incidences of uh, headaches perhaps yes definitely so if you are like we talked about you know carrying the dumbbell and putting it down so if you mm. put it down and you've taken a uh, say a 2 3 okay. minute break then you can again lift it up for another 20 30 minutes without having developing that soreness of the muscles 
so definitely taking breaks will give relief from these headaches and uh, other symptoms that the children are having because of the digitalized strain so like i said you know the single most important takeaway i would want from this whole discussion is the 2020 20 rule where you mm. take breaks every 20 minutes right uh, another question has come in from gauri and she's saying ma'am i have pain behind my head how can i reduce it do you think this could be related to eye strain is there pain something behind else? my head gauri that's not necessarily related to the eyes you know generally okay. digital eye strain causes headache in and around the eyes in the front mm. of the head between the brows uh, behind the eyes that kind of areas behind your head uh, could be just a cluster headache or some other form of headache so i think maybe mm. you should see your physician make sure mm. there's nothing else going on and uh, uh, keep yourself hydrated right mm. so uh, dr jyoti you spoke about um, it being okay to study at night uh, there is a question which is coming from akash farma saying is night lamp enough or a tube light is better if somebody is studying you know when it's night and there's no natural light so um, see when we were studying from books we had night lamps uh, falling on our books and that was okay but mm. as far as uh, we are on screens now we want a good ambient lighting so i would suggest that your whole room be lit up mm-hmm. right unless of course you have other people sleeping in the room then that is going to become an issue but um, it would definitely be better if your whole room is lit up because night lamps again is focused light onto one particular area and the mm. night lamps are never so bright and most often the screens are brighter than the night lamps so mm. i would suggest you have a good uh, you know an led light or a tube light or whatever it is the whole room is lit up and then you sit in the room that would be definitely better right Dr. Shoudhury, we are getting a lot of uh, questions about, um, you know, using glasses during uh, uh, online classes or when we are in front of the screen. Now, Hari Karan is asking, "Hello, ma'am, is it good to use spectacles during online classes? Now, if I don't have a pa, if my eyes are normal, but I spend a lot of time in front of the screen, would you recommend I get the uh, blue eye glass?" Not really. Not really. So, if you don't have any power of glasses. the blue uh, cut glasses are not really going to help you as far as digital eye strain is concerned so putting on a pair of uh, putting on a pair of glasses is just going to get you complacent so i would rather that you don't use the glasses take the breaks and you do uh, do everything else that we have been discussing over the last few minutes and that yeah. would be more important more beneficial to you but if you already have a glass power there's no hmm. harm in getting blue cut lenses incorporated into the glass power all right so if you already have a powered spectacle you can uh, get the blue cut uh, glasses incorporated there uh, thank you so much uh, dr chaudhry for uh, joining us today and taking up uh, so many questions and talking to us about the digitalized strain now as we wrap up for this conversation today if there were just three things that you want to reiterate to everybody who's watching what would they be to you know for optimal eye health um as far as the digital thing is concerned i would say the 2020 20 rule hmm. blink and use your glasses prescription glasses if you have them because i see a lot of children don't use their glasses They're like we're hmm. not going to school so why do we need our glasses at home so that is causing a lot of strain so hmm. these three things if you could do i think most of the problems of eye strain can be taken care of all right thank you so much uh, dr chaudhry for uh, joining us uh, this evening and uh, sharing with us all the tips and tricks uh, that all of us can deploy uh, to reduce the strain on our eyes as we spend more and more time in front of the screens how we can take care of them and how we can ensure that even if we can't cut down on our screen time drastically we can at least give our eyes a break and give uh, you know some breaks to our eyes so that they don't come under a lot of strain thank you so much you're welcome it was indeed a pleasure interacting with you and answering all the questions that the children had thank you and thank goodbye. you thank you so much